You've probably heard about it. DeepSeek, the new Chinese AI that's actually making tech giants tremble. Even Nvidia stocks dropped when it got released. Some say it's actually more powerful than ChatGPT. And in any case, on the contrary to others, big AIs, this one is open source and free. So you know what? Let's put it into test and see if it's capable of creating a Python trading bot quite easily. Let's go. So I don't know what to expect exactly. So you know what? Let's go brute force and let's see how fast we can get to deep sea creating a Python crypto trading bot in Python for us. And I'm going to actually use this Python wrapper I'm working on at the moment. This is part of a update of a code of a Python crypto trading bot that harnesses crypto volatility anomalies. I'll put the links in the description down below in case you're, you're interested. It's all free, fully customizable, homemade, all of that. Anyways, so I won't go into the details of programming today. The point is to get to see how fast it can handle all of this and create something for us. But this is a Python wrapper which basically is a compilation of methods that allows my trading bot to place orders, fetch data from my, my crypto exchange account, etc. So what I'm going to do, and this has actually been, I've coded that using CCXT, which is a Python library to deal with a lot of crypto exchanges and things like that. So you know what, let me first ask it, do you know of CCXT? Let's see what it tells us. And from there, we'll see if we can do something together. Yes, I'm familiar with CCXT, Cryptocurrency Exchange Trading Library. Perfect. So what I'm going to do is as I control A, control C. So I'm just going to paste this here, brute force, as I said. And actually that trading bot I'm coding, this update uses trigger orders, which is quite a specific type of orders. And I don't have yet in that wrapper a method to place a simple market order. So that's an order where you say, I want to buy BTC now, this amount, place the order for me. So you know what? Let's actually add, ask him to see if he can add a simple place order to it. So can you add a method to place a simple market order? to this wrapper. Great. Let's see. And let's see how, if it handles and it understands everything that I put in there. Certainly. Okay. Whatever. So diff, async diff, this is an asynchronous code. Okay. I won't go into the details of that, but it's doing, it's seeing that I've made everything asynchronous and it's already doing it. So that's very good. Another thing that I see here that's very good for attempt in max tries. So for this code that I'm developing, I want my orders, if there's an error, for example, for a rate limit issue or something like this, and the order wasn't placed, I want, I've implemented for my, all my orders to have a retry mechanism. And I, I didn't ask, you, you can see here, I didn't ask, you know, I just, oh, method, I made a little mistake. <laughs> Anyways, I just asked to add this method, but I can see it already analyzed that my wrapper was using this kind of protocol or philosophy and it applied it directly without me even asking. Super powerful. And I can see self session create order. Very good. Create order is the standard CCXT method to place your orders. So it knows that it use that very good type market, etc. So you know what? Let me do. OK, I'll save this. The bot will do in a Jupyter notebook. So in the first cell, I'm pasting this wrapper. And what we're going to do is indeed add that method that we've deep seek did for us. Where will I put it? Let me go quite at the top. So I don't. Yes, there we go. OK, we'll just put it here. I think I need one extra indentation. Great. I'm going to save place market order. So what I'm going to do is I'm running this cell. So the code knows about all these methods. And we can, can you please take a minute? No, not now. I'm recording a video. <laughs> okay, so it's executed that cell. Great. So I think we now need to use that method to see if DeepSeek made it work properly. So we have an example use case, dev example. 
Okay, try BTC, whatever. That's very good. Okay, so I'm just going to, you know, I didn't, I didn't even have to ask. It's already giving us a example use case. Great. So I'm going to paste there. I think I'll just do Ethereum by, let's say it'll be 0.2, buying, etc. So one thing's important here, I need to put confidential, my confidential data, so my API keys. So those are keys you create on the crypto exchange to then you plug those credentials in your code so that when you're doing the request, you're placing your order, the exchange says, okay, that comes from a authorized code. It's authorized to place an order, so I will place the order. So you know what? Let me set this up and I'll get back to you. Okay, great. I've set everything up. Actually, rather than pasting directly the credentials here and you would see them, this is sensitive data. So I've put my API credentials in this credentials JSON file, which I'm importing here, and then I'm plugging them directly there. So I don't have to delete the key after I've recorded a video, all of this. And also, since we are placing our orders on BitGet, the BitGet crypto exchange in the APIs credentials that you have to give, there's also password. So I, I did that here. Great. So I would say everything is set up. I have the account, my dev testing account here set up. So we'll just place the order on that sub account. So let's run and see how it goes. So we have a mistake. I think show run cannot be called from. OK, I know this error. This is I did this my fault. I didn't say to deep seek that I was doing my testing on a Jupyter notebook. And when you do, you're doing asynchronous um, a wait. When you're doing asynchronous functions, it's a bit different when you do it on a Jupyter notebook anyways. No big deal. We just have to change this into await this because this is asynchronous. OK, this should be good. So let's run this and see if we actually do manage to get to having an order placed. Great. So we are getting the return, the response of the API, and that's the response when that is telling us that we have placed a market order and I'm talking too much. And as you can see, we indeed have an order placed there. So that's really cool. So I'm actually going to brush close this. And I think now we can think about creating a bit of a trading bot. OK, so what I suggest we do to keep things simple is a trading bot. Basically, you will have a rule if you want, given the price, your indicators, all of this. And given a rule, you would enter position or exit it, etc. That's kind of the basics of a trading bot. So in my Python wrapper, I already have a fetch OHL CV, so that downloads the crypto price of my token, etc. So I think we might as well just ask DeepSeek to create a little routine, like saying, um, if I give a price parameter of Ethereum, if I run the code, if the price is above something or below something, I want my code to enter a position. So let's do that. Great. So can you do a little routine? is, I don't know, at the moment it was below 300. Let's say we want to enter position if it's above 250 USDT is where if the price of Ethereum is above 250 USDT, I want to place a market order, a buy, let's say a buy market order. Great. And use the fetch or H lcv data of the wrapper for that okay and I, I you can see that i do make mistakes in my i'm concentrating on too many things but i think let's see i mean i think it's pretty much gonna work check if the ethereum price okay great okay we'll have to plug again the api keys so we have a little try okay Downloading a one minute time frame, because when you're downloading the data, you have to say what candles you want, what time frame, what chart you're trading on. So it's going for one minute. Naturally, I didn't say anything. So great. I took this. OK, latest price is checking when you download the data. What is the latest close price? So that if the latest close price is above 250, the market a place market order will be here. Order size, it decided not to give it directly where is order size. OK, it just separated. It's here 0.01, whatever. OK, so you know what? I'm just going to copy paste this in the code. 
put again the, the little um, JSON import of the credentials and we'll run it together. Actually, before we place the order, I've just configured everything. Let me just mention, if you don't know about BitGet yet, this is a crypto exchange I like a lot. They have some of the best training fees, a very good API, a lot of pairs, futures, spot, everything. I put all my trading bots on them, etc. If you ever want to try them out, create an account. There's a registration link in the description down below. If you use that to create your account, you will get a 10% discount on all your trading fees, which in the long run makes a big difference. And also, if you do do that, it supports this channel a lot. My work and all my work into creating all this open source and free content that I do on the channel. So I want to say a big thank you if you do use that registration link. Anyways, so I've done everything. As I said, I've configured. We can we have here. I've just placed again those the, this here. Great. I also changed the um, there was. The, and unfortunately, my microphone died at that point and the rest of the audio I didn't realize and the rest there's no more audio for the rest of the recording. Since I want to keep things live, etc. I'm just going to comment what I was showing on the screen again. So we so you get the whole story. So what I was saying at that point now was that I had also changed the await. The Asensio run was still there. I put back the await and I'm running the cell to see if the order is executed. Taking a little break to just tell you that this video is not financial advice. None of this is financial advice. It's just about me sharing my enthusiasm for this, my work, my opinions, etc. You have to know that trading is risky and you can, the risk is of losing all your capital. Anyways, so we were saying that the order was placed. We had some return. We had some prints. The actually the DeepSeek added some nice little prints saying that the latest U Ethereum USDT price was of that 2,649, and it was indeed above our threshold. We got the return, the the message from placing the order, and you can see that indeed when we're looking on the exchange, not surprisingly, we have that we have our order placed. So that's really cool. I mean, I think I'm pretty amazed with a few prompts. I did indeed give my my wrapper code to DeepSeek, but just it was able to understand everything, the technicalities that was in there, the structure. And in just a few prompts, we we were able to create a Python crypto training bot. Obviously, with a we just asked for something very simple, but that totally means that from there, you can move on to creating something much more complicated and involved. So, and I mean, again, this this tool is 100% free. So I think that ticks a lot of boxes for me. And in using this as a program helper, coding helper, I mean, I think, look, I'm, I'm very much, a, I'm quite impressed anyway. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Happy trading. Take care and see you soon.